Bronchiolitis is inflammation of the bronchioles and is often caused by a viral infection, notably respiratory syncytial virus, RSV. Bronchiolitis is the most common respiratory tract infection of neonates and is usually self-limiting. A major source of confusion of treatment is differentiating a viral bronchiolitis to asthma. In summary, bronchiolitis is usually seen in infants less than two years old, and asthma is seen in older children. The main causative agents is the respiratory syncytial virus. Other causes include rhinovirus and parainfluenza virus. The respiratory tract begins with the nasal cavity and oral cavity. Oxygen inhaled travels through this area, the upper respiratory tract, and then down the lower respiratory tract. The lower respiratory tract begins with the larynx. The larynx continues to become the trachea, and then the trachea bifurcates into the bronchi, and then smaller bronchi, and then bronchioles, before terminating as an alveolus. A normal bronchiole has smooth muscle cells around it, which help in contraction of the bronchiole. The inside of the bronchioles are lined by mucus produced by goblet cells. Bronchiolitis is inflammation of the bronchioles. Something similar called bronchitis is inflammation of the bronchi and typically affects older people who smoke and not infants. In bronchiolitis, the changes include narrowing of the airways due to mucus hypersecretion, cell wall thickening, and smooth muscle contraction. These findings are also seen in patients who have asthma. And in infants around two years old, bronchiolitis can often be mistaken as asthma. Bronchiolitis also causes air trapping, where oxygen can be inhaled but gets trapped in the lower respiratory tract, in the alveolus, due to surrounding inflammation. This causes difficulty breathing for the infant. Respiratory syncytial virus is the major cause of bronchiolitis. A single-stranded RNA virus, it is spread through airborne droplets or direct contact with respiratory secretions. A respiratory syncytial virus infection begins with replication of the virus in the nasopharynx, causing chorizal symptoms. A lower respiratory tract infection can begin one to three days later. The virus spreads to the bronchioles, where small bronchiolar epithelium line the small airways. If a lower respiratory tract infection occurs, the virus causes an inflammatory response immune cells infiltrate the area. The inflammatory response causes edema, increased mucus production from goblet cells, and eventually necrosis and regeneration of these epithelial cells. This leads to small airway obstruction, air trapping, and increased airway resistance. These pathological features lead to the signs in bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis can be mild, moderate, or severe, depending on the clinical presentation. Infants with mild to moderate bronchiolitis typically are tachypneic, have a fever, and have signs of increased work of breathing, such as nasal flaring, tracheal tug, intercostal recessions, and abdominal breathing. On auscultation, they can have inspiratory crepitations and a wheeze. Severe bronchiolitis is concerning, and the infant appears very unwell. They can have a very high respiratory rate or a low respiratory rate and even apnea, which are episodes where they stop breathing altogether. There is severe grunting and maybe cyanosis and paleness as well. The child has difficulty feeding, taking in less than 50% or normal feeds. All these features are concerning and all these features indicate severe bronchiolitis. Risk factors for severe bronchiolitis or those with high risk of illness include the young, especially less than six weeks old, premature infants or low weight for gestation, immunodeficient infants and those with congenital heart disease, 
neurological conditions and chronic respiratory uh, illness. The differential diagnosis is important, especially if an infant presents with recurrent bronchiolitis or has a severe respiratory tract infection. Differential diagnosis include acute asthma, viral induced wheeze, pneumonia, congestive heart failure, and ptosis. The diagnosis of bronchiolitis is clinical. An infant or child less than two years of age presenting with initial symptoms and signs of upper respiratory tract infections, followed by a cough, tachypnea, inspiratory crepitations, and wheeze is likely to have bronchiolitis. There is usually no role in investigations unless the infant has a severe bronchiolitis or something else is suspected. Management is largely supportive, focusing on maintaining oxygenation and hydration of the patient. Evidence suggests no benefit from bronchodilators or corticoid use in infants with the first episode of bronchiolitis. Mild bronchiolitis is easily managed at home, important to encourage oral intake. Moderate bronchiolitis with increased work of breathing can be monitored in the hospital and paracetamol and ibuprofen can be given for temperature and for symptom relief. Oxygen can be given to uh, maintain oxygen saturation above 92. It's important to encourage oral hydration and if not, consider nasogastric feeding. Bronchodilators and corticosteroids again are not recommended for infants with bronchiolitis. For older children, you can consider bronchodilators for symptom relief. If oxygen levels are still low, consider high flow nasal prongs. Severe bronchiolitis will require oxygen via high flow nasal prongs or even a continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP. Nasogastric tube or IV cannulation is important to keep up with the fluids. Children will require admission to hospital and potentially further investigations. Persistent hypoxemia will require ICU referral. Most cases of bronchiolitis resolve without complications. However, some complications can include dehydration, apnea, particularly in infants born prematurely, and then obviously secondary bacterial infections.